The main value is the value of freedom. And we are white, fluffy and of course absolutely wonderful and thanks to that sanctions we become stronger and stronger. That the forecast of the West experts was 15-20% fall of the Russian economy but we are holding only the 2%. Because now Russia are friends with not so many countries that uh, will be able to steal more money from the budget. Orthodox industrialists uh, who work three shifts a day. The big difference between Biden's and Putin's speech this was the end answer for the Biden's visit to the Kyiv. Stop, stop man, stop this war. All those discourse before were, was forgotten. This is how it works in history. You want to fight with the whole world and there is a big hole in Russian budget. The whole world is moving forward unlike the Russia that is moving back. This is two different worlds from USA and Europe, NATO and Russia. But he don't honestly care about that. They just beat them with the sticks and people cannot do anything. Hi everybody, it's Alex Gray and today we'll talk about Putin's address and Joe Biden's address to people. Joe Biden's a very ordinary speech. The classic speech of American politician Biden uh, has made dozens of that speeches in his life. The more important speech that was made in Kyiv. It was a direct message to Putin in which Biden said we will defend Ukraine and all you guys hopes that we will get tired and we have presidential company and so on. Uh, this is will not uh, stop this uh, defending of the Ukraine. We will continue to defend Ukraine to the end because Ukraine is fighting for the values that we share and the main value is the value of freedom. It seems to me that this is the most important thing that Biden have done in those two days. The second of course an appeal to directly to the Russian people. Now, unfortunately as you understand Russian people will not hear this appeal or they will be told that they have been threatened by American president. In that appeal Biden said that we are not fighting with Russian people. We are fighting with those who started, started this terrible war in Ukraine. And I also think that this is important because this is the contrast between Biden's speech and the Putin's speech. The Putin speech was typical speech of the Soviet politician. There was just not enough those style of the Brezhnev like oh oh the, this slow speech of Brezhnev is if you know how he talked. He told about those bad imperialists and the main enemy number one which means is to destroy everything and he's just doing the devil knows what all over the world. And we are white, fluffy and of course absolutely wonderful and just protect people of Donbass. He told that people of Donbass were killed many years uh, but we know that uh, for the last years there, there was um, almost uh, 20 people died in the last year in those fights uh, that was a random uh, shell that hit the, the, the man in the city or somewhere there. And we don't know what the shells of what country that, that were, uh, maybe it was Russian shells that were uh, launched in the uh, wrong direction. He started to talk about how Russian economy is growing, how we are good, how we're holding the sanctions, uh, how our e economy is really strong and thanks to that sanctions we become stronger and stronger, uh, that our GPT law, um, was falling only 2%, that the forecast of the West experts was 15-20% uh, fall of the Russian economy but we are holding only the 2%. We don't know how this GDP reflects reality of Russian economy because prices in the Russian magazines are s rise very much like 30-50% on some products it's more than 100% cars are expensive in uh, more expensive in USA two times more so uh, this GDP is not reflecting a, a reality at all. Most of this GDP is military that's not giving any profit to the usual people, uh, to the people that live in just cities and lo normal life. Because all those military units that was produced they will be destroyed in the war or later they will be just stay in the Russian uh, this military um, facilities and will not be sold to other countries. Because now Russia are friends with not so many countries that will buy Russian military equipment uh, and uh, thanks to that war uh, more countries will buy USA and NATO uh, 
uh, military equipment and this um, like uh, high marshes tanks uh, because they show their e efficiency on the battlefield um, unlike the Russian and also he told about how much wheat grain was produced in Russia in that year in the previ previous 22 year and uh, that this was maximum the record of the all time that was in Russia and even in the Soviet Union this was for those people that was born in the USSR that uh, heard a lot of those news in that time about the wheat grain production of the USSR. Uh, this was news for those times. This was the sp speech of uh, Soviet U Union uh, politician. He also told about, of course, the orthodox industrialists uh, who work three shifts a day again and it's uh, five years of production in two years or in three years and about the glorious armed Russian forces that will be given more money from the budget that uh, they will buy some uh, apartments for those military people who suffered on the battlefield. Also, he told that he's creating a new department where uh, his friends, of course, uh, uh, will be able to steal more money from the budget. Because we know how this works. Uh, he created a fund for the military people who suffered. And uh, uh, who will rule that fund? Of course, some of the governors that uh, will take uh, many much money from that bu budget to his pockets. There's a good quote about it. When the bureaucracy does not know what they are doing, they begin to create new departments. The big difference between Biden's and Putin's speech is that uh, Biden's start with a speech that we are not your enemies, and this is an important qu uh, message. And Putin starts his speech with that uh, we have enemies, and um, uh, this is the most important uh, his uh, speech in the year and a half. And he starts with Americans, uh, continues through the speech about how um, how Americans are our enemies, and he ends his speech with the same fact that uh, we are your enemies. And this withdrawal from the Treaty of Non proliferation of nuclear weapons, this was the answer for the Biden's visit to the Kyiv from Putin. But he mentioned that uh, he's just stopping it, he's not quitting it uh, forever, no, he just stopped uh, for, for some time. Because Putin is afraid to leave the treaty forever, because in reality he don't want to be enemies with USA, NATO and all those countries who have nuclear weapons as Russia did, because maybe advisors of the Putin said him to him that uh, he should not break off relations with the West, because Russia still need a lot of things from other countries that uh, is not uh, put any sanctions and Russia will not survive in the total isolation like North Korea, for example. Because there is an example of this isolation for the Soviet Union after the war in Afghanistan, uh, before the USA started. Uh, first was the Soviet Union that started the war uh, there, uh, and after USA continued because um, Soviet Union uh, supports one side and then the USA supports the other side. And uh, that's uh, all grown with a big Afghan conflict. Um, so after that um, war, uh, there's a lot of sanctions to the Soviet Union and uh, in the end that was led to the fall of the USSR. And Biden tried to say Putin that stop, stop man, stop this war because we are uh, have this coalition, uh, this alliance that will not let you uh, conquer the Ukraine. Thanks to Putin and this war that he started, the NATO and Europe's countries united uh, and all those discourse before were was forgotten. And now this big coalition that is united against the Russian, against the one big enemy, and this, is, this is how it works in history. There's a lot of discourse between countries, but when the one big enemy uh, appears, all this, they forgot all of that and they unite in, because they have one big goal. And now this goal is to stop Russia. And he wants to say Putin that you want to fight with the whole world? This is not the example of the Cold War that was 40 years ago. No, now Russia is one country. It's not the half uh, world that USSR have. All those countries that will support in USSR now. Now Russia ha is a lone country with several uh, small countries like Belarus that support in Russia totally. 
In that time, USSR has uh, allies in the U in the Asia, in the Latin America, and many European countries were supporting USSR. And now Russia don't have any. Even the China does not support Russia. China tried to be as far as it can be from Russia. They only buy in those resources because there are contracts that were drawn up earlier before the war. There is no new contracts with China right now. Putin said that he wants to create a new trade roads to the east, to the China, those Asian countries. And again, it's like the USSR that was uh, building this road to the China. Uh, but now it's not work like that. Th those countries are not supporting Russia. And there is a big hole in Russian budget because there is a, a decree to make a compulsory mandatory payment in the Russian one-time mandatory payment for the Russian budget from all companies of the Russia. All, even the small ones. And several days ago, Putin said the mission uh, to the Russian <laughs> economists there's, there should be all products uh, and medicines in the pharmacies and the stores so people and people should um, should be able to buy a car no matter what car but they should buy uh, they uh, should be able to buy it he's very afraid of the situation that was in the late ussr where people don't have ability to buy products because there is no products they have money they had money but there was no products in the in the shops there was no cars uh, no pharmacies People should stay in the big queues for the several hours to buy some products. Two or three hours to buy some piece of the meat. That was terrible times in the late USSR and be before the fall. We all understand that the whole world is moving forward, unlike the Russia that is moving back. Russia is moving back in the time and is afraid of those things that were in those 40-30 years ago and the most countries don't afraid of that they don't care about the people have enough money to buy all this and don't care about simple things like food cars uh, some enjoyments uh, and money for that right now Putin is destroying Russia uh, and he started this uh, one year ago uh, 24 February 2022 He's destroying economy, he's destroying sociality, and he's destroying demography because uh, Russia lost 200,000 uh, dead and injured. This is two different worlds from USA, uh, Europe, NATO, and Russia. USA president care about the freedom, and Russia president care about uh, sh people sh uh, should be able to buy products in the magazines. But he don't honestly care about that. He only afraid that people um, will be massively, uh, hundreds uh, uh, of thousands will march on the streets. That's the only thing he afraid, because if there was less people that march on the streets, he will be able to stop it, because he has so much police, home, so much this uh, National Guard, it's like 400,000. 400,000 uh, National Guard and 500,000 police units. How do you think how much uh, this amount, one million of people with the weapons, with the, uh, with equipment, with protection, can hold uh, the people with no weapons on the street? Of course, we saw in Moscow, in the St. Petersburg, where the rallies and a lot of thousands of people were in the street. So, uh, several thousand of the National Guard is able to hold it. They just beat them with the sticks. And people cannot do anything. They don't have any possibility to stop this. How you can fight against the people with the equipment? The anti-Russian coalition is so big that more than 50 uh, countries are against, against Russia. And even the Morocco <laughs> is supplying tanks to Ukraine. So hit the like, subscribe for more, comment down below what you think about that, share with your friends. This was Alex Gray and goodbye.